Okay, welcome back. In the second part of derivatives, what we're going to do is we're going to explore some different techniques. We start out with all the trig functions. So to, to develop the concept of the derivative of the trig functions, we have to take a look at two special limits. First of all, the one we look at most often is the limit as theta approaches 0 of the sine of theta over theta equals 1. You can also take the reciprocal of that. Like if I were to write it this way, if I were to have the limit as theta approaches 0 of theta over the sine of theta, that's also 1. Um, the, and then the second one is the limit uh, as theta approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine of theta over theta. That's 0. This one, the top one we look at most often, you might see it written this way sometimes. This one we don't do much with because, because the limit's 0. Not that, not that big a deal. Let me look at a couple of examples for you of this. I will ask you these limits. I will um, do these limits and, and I kind of um, make you generalize some situations like this. And this first one, I'm taking the limit as x approaches 0 of the sine of 5x over 2x. And one of the things, you know, in the previous video, what I had, I mean, in the previous screen, what I had was the sine of theta over, or sine of theta over theta. In this particular case, I got a 5 and a 2. That 2 is a constant. I can just pull a 1 half out front there. And if I can write it as the sine of 5x over 5x, it's still 1. The limit's still 1. So what I'm going to try to do is do this way. I'm going to do limit as x approaches 0. I'm going to pull that 1 half out front. And then it's going to be the sine of 5x over x. The only thing I did so far was just move that 2 out front. Now, I need a 5x on the bottom. So I want to put a 5x on the bottom right here. But to put a 5x on the bottom right there, I can't just randomly put a 5x there. I had to multiply by 1. So if I put a 5 there, I had to put a 5 in the numerator as well. So I'm going to make this a 5. Now, this limit in parentheses, I can take that. This is a constant. That goes out in front of the limit. The limit in parentheses, that's 1. So really, this just becomes 5 halves times 1, or 5 halves. Um, in my second example, the sine of t over 2t, excuse me, the tangent of, of t over 2t, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break that tangent up. I'm going to break that tangent up into um, the sine over cosine. And when I break that up into sine over cosine, I can rewrite it. Um, again, this 2t, that, that becomes a, that, that's a 1 half again. So really, I can write it this way. I can write it as 1 limit of, excuse me, 1 half times the limit of t approaches 0. I'm going to write tangent of t over t. So it's going to be, let's write it as 1 over t. That's my numerator. I mean, my denominator, times the sine of t over cosine of t. That's my tangent. And um, the 1 half is just the constant. Now, I can put this sine of t over here, and I can really write it as 1 half limit t approaches 0 of the sine of t over t times 1 over cosine of t. That's 1. This is also 1 because the cosine of 0 is 1. So these limits, that whole thing, that whole expression is just 1. So this is 1 half. And then in my final example, I had the limit as x approaches 0 of 2x plus 1 minus cosine of x over 3x. And what I can do in this one, because I had that denominator as just a monomial, I can put 3x, or I can I can pull one third out front. I put 3x, um, um, actually just put it, pull pull um, the three out front, so one third out front, and um, or separate up the the uh, denominator. So let's do that. Sorry about that. I'm just kind of stumbling around how I wanted to write this. But I'm going to put 2x over 3x, and then plus. 1 minus cosine of x over 3x. Here, the x's will cancel. So that is just 2 thirds. I can, I can factor out a 1 third there. I can, factor, I can factor out a 1 third they have in common. So I can get this as 1 minus cosine of x over x. So I can write it as this way. 1 third limit as x approaches 0. It's going to be 2 plus 1 minus cosine of x 
over x. If I take this limit as x approaches 0, that all becomes 0. That stays at 2. So I get 2 times 1 third or 2 thirds. I do give you some problems on these. Um, I do give you some problems on these limits and make sure that you can you can work them out. Um, it's something that we work with today in this first assignment and then we don't come back and work with them again. But you, you could see something like this on the exam and we'll just make sure your memory, uh, uh, you know, to jog your memory when we get to that point. All right, so really the nuts and bolts of this um, is finding the derivatives of our trig functions. And we find the derivatives of these trig functions, and again, this is just stuff you need to memorize. So, like, you just have to go right down the list, sine, cosine, tangent, and then all the reciprocal functions. If I find the derivative of sine, it's cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. Derivative of tangent is secant squared. Derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. Derivative of secant is secant times tangent. Derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant times cotangent. Uh, one of the things that people do sometimes, they're like, oh yeah, all the C ones are negative. That's fine. You, if you remember it that way, that's that's fine. I'm okay with that. Uh, well, the only problem with that is in the second semester, um, when we go back the other way and we take and find the antiderivatives, uh, all those rules change. So just be careful about that. We find this derivative. If I can, I should always try to see if I can simplify this, but uh, in this case, I can't. So since I can't simplify this, I have to use quotient rule. So y prime is going to be, the derivative of the numerator is going to be uh, cosine of x times 1 plus cosine of x minus the derivative of the denominator is negative sine of x times sine of x over um, 1 plus cosine of x quantity squared. Let's uh, simplify and distribute. y prime is cosine of x plus cosine of x cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x over 1 plus cosine of x squared. Pythagorean identity, uh, cosine of x plus sine of x is 1. So y prime is cosine of x plus 1 over 1 plus cosine of x squared. And then I can actually cancel one of these. So that goes down to 1. That cancels. It's a 1 on top. So it's 1 over 1 plus cosine of x. Again, yes, you have to simplify all that. Uh, it's not just knowing the derivatives of sine and cosine and then quotient rule in this particular case, but it's simplifying it down and canceling it algebraically and stuff. Uh, another example, secant times tangent. Again, I should see if it simplifies. This doesn't, so you just have to use product rule. So g prime of x. The derivative of secant is secant of x times tangent of x, and then times tangent of x because remember that with product rule, it's the derivative of the first, it's the derivative of the first function times the second function plus derivative of the second function times the first function. Um, the derivative of tangent is secant squared of x times secant of x. We should go ahead and. Um, we should go ahead and multiply all that stuff out. And so when I multiply all that stuff out, when I multiply all that stuff out, um, I, I can go ahead and, and uh, wait a second here. Okay, sorry. Um, when I multiply all that stuff out, what I get is I get secant of x, secant of x times tangent squared of x plus secant cubed of x. Um, I can factor out a secant, secant of x times tangent squared of x plus secant squared of x. And um, once I have it in that format, I can see if I can, I can write an identity. In this particular case, there is an identity between secant squared and tangent squared, um, but it doesn't really simplify that much further, so really you're okay. So it's just fine. You can leave it just like that. One of the ways, one of the things you have to be careful of, or one of the things you have to do, is that when, when I do this and I, I do um, problems and I, I simplify them and I put them on a multiple choice, I will try to simplify this as much as possible, these answers as much as possible. So you just have to uh, keep working, keep working, keep working until you get to the point where you feel comfortable. If it's a free response question, um, I'll look at your original one, like is this original derivative correct? And then I'll look at the simplifying, and this will be a minor thing because this is more pre calculus. 
in algebra one that it, or algebra than it is uh, calculus. What I was saying a moment ago is you should always try to simplify things. So like in this particular case, the secant is one over a cosine of x. The cotangent is cosine of x over sine of x. These cosines will cancel. One over sine is cosecant of x. So really, this equation says y equals cosecant of x. What's the derivative of that? Well, dy dx is negative cosecant of x cotangent of x. And yes, I do give you some problems like that in your assignments where you can simplify them using pre-calculus um, before you find the derivative. Um, we can also uh, find some different things. We can find some slopes of tangent lines, um, and then we can find slopes of where is it horizontal, that kind of stuff. And sometimes I'll specify domains, or oftentimes I'll specify domains on this. We're looking at a derivative, or we're looking for the function as y equals the sine of x. The derivative of that is cosine of x. Oh boy, here comes unit circle. Find the derivative at 0, pi over 3, um, pi over 2, 2 pi over 3, and pi. So the derivative at 0, put in 0 there, cosine of 0 is 1. The derivative at pi over 3, cosine of pi over 3, cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. The derivative at pi over 2 is 0. The derivative at 2 pi over 3. Remember, cosine second quadrant is negative, so it's negative. It's negative 1 half. The derivative at pi is negative 1. Now, the second part I'm asking you, where's the tangent line horizontal? The tangent line horizontal at pi over 2. And you could generalize that. Remember back in pre-calculus last year, and I had you solve the equation like, okay, where's the cosine of theta equal to 0? It could be like, okay, well, it's pi over 2 plus or minus 2k pi. And then it's 3 pi over 2 plus or minus 2k pi. We don't do a whole lot of that plus or minus 2k pi. Uh, that comes up every once in a while, but not too much. But I could say specify a domain and say, OK, well, where am I going to have tangent lines being horizontal between 0 and 2 pi? Well, if I do it between 0 and 2 pi, it would be at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Another example, um, find the, oh, that should be fine. Find an equation of the normal line to the graph of the tangent at the point pi over 4, 1. Remember, and I, I don't, can't remember if I've showed you this before in another video or not, but a normal line, what a normal line is, is perpendicular to a tangent line. So you do it exactly the same as you do a tangent line, but you just take the opposite reciprocal of the slope. So what ends up happening here, um, what ends up happening here is that, um, uh, that with the normal line, I find the derivative. I know the point already. The point doesn't change. I find the derivative y prime, and that's going to be the secant squared of x. And if I find the slope of the tangent line at pi over 4, it's going to be um, the secant of pi over 4 quantity squared. The secant of pi over 4 is going to be the square root of 2. So it's the square root of 2 squared. Remember, secant of pi over 4 um, is 1 over cosine. So it's 2 over square root of 2. Rationalize that, and I get square root of 2. And when I square it, I just get 2. So that's the slope of the tangent line. So the slope of the normal line is simply the opposite reciprocal of that. So it's negative 1 half. So then, since it's negative 1 half, I want to write the equation of the normal line. So I get y minus 1 equals negative 1 half times x minus pi over 4. All right. So again, it's the same concepts that we've been working with in terms of um, tangent lines and instantaneous rate of change and velocity, slopes of tangent lines. We just throw that trig in there. It gets a little bit harder because unit circle gets a little bit harder. Horizontal tangent lines, vertical tangent lines, um, and it's just starting to put it all together. One of the hardest things about calculus is that it's just all these different layers, and um, you have to know all the individual layers, and then you have to be able to put them all together. Best of luck. Memorize those trig derivatives.